This episode of the Dental Insiders Podcast has been brought to you by Ignite DDS, fueling passion beyond the classroom for future dental practice success. Learn more at IgniteDDS.com. Episode of the Dental Insiders with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Michael Dunn. The Dental Insiders is a podcast for dentists, dental team members, and industry professionals. We'll share stories and lessons from clinicians and industry visionaries with the goal of providing an entertaining and informative look at the industry we share. And we are very happy to welcome today Mike Cataldo, CEO of Convergent Dental. Woohoo! Thanks for joining <laughs> us, Mike. We appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. So, Great. you know, I just I, I have to ask this question. Did you have bad experiences with the dentist growing up? <laughs> Uh, I didn't have great ones. Uh, it wasn't the uh, impetus for me starting this company, but I probably had the same types of experiences that everybody else had. So maybe I was a little bit cart before the horse there. I think we should <laughs> take a step back, but that was just like burning. That was burning. In we my mind. Come back to you know, that. Yeah. Well, you know, the, you know I've, I've met Mike a couple of times and that has always been just like this burning question. Right. I just had to get it out. So yeah. we'll, we'll take a step back. You know, because everyone that's listening and watching may not be familiar with uh, Convergent or your Solea laser. So um, talk to us a little bit about what the Convergent story. How did you start this company? Well, uh, I'm actually an entrepreneur. I've started a number of companies, uh, always in healthcare technology, mostly software. Never a device, never hardware before this. And uh, I'm an investor in a venture fund that a guy named Nathan Monty came to looking for money. And he had this idea for this laser. Uh, he had read a lot of the research on this wavelength, on Soleil's wavelength, 9.3 microns, most of which came out of UCSF Dental School, led by John Featherstone, who's now the dean. And all the research pointed to the concept or an idea that a laser could be developed that would both cut hard and soft tissue efficiently without anesthesia, without pain, and by the way, prevent cavities. That's where most of the research actually uh, was, was done. Uh, so Nathan is a great engineer, a great scientist, but um, he needed a business partner. And as part of the due diligence process, I fell in love with the idea. And Nathan and I talked about me jumping in and being the business half of the equation. And, you know, and that's, that's how the company was born. We funded it and grew it to where it is today. And awesome. when did, um, so when did you officially launch Solea? Has it been one year, two years? I don't know the exact date. Well, you know, I don't know the exact date either, but uh, it was the first uh, installation of Solea in a dentist's office was in August of 2013, actually. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so just uh, two and a half years. A little over two years. Yeah, yeah. a little over yeah. two years. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, you know, since then, I follow, I've followed, I've kind of followed the, the story pretty closely. I, I um, first um, came in contact with Mike. We did a, a, a print interview, a print. We did a written interview on my blog. I thank you, by the way, for participating in that. And, you know, one of the things that, that always excited me about the Solea mission was this idea of anesthesia free or, or pain free dentistry. And, um, you know, that is a bold mission to say, you know, we want to make going to the dentist pain free. I think that's a pretty bold mission, a bold statement. And, um, you know, we're, we're two and a half years into this now. How, how are dentists, how is the industry reacting to, to, this, um, to this bold statement? Well, I would say very positively um, in general. Uh, when, I, when I say that, you know, we have over 200 dentists now using the laser. Uh, the reports we get back are north of 95% anesthesia free, both in hard and soft tissue. Um, so I'd say the reaction is very positive. We still have an uphill battle because the, you know, the industry as a whole uh, still has a, what we call the erbium hangover, uh, meaning it, it was, you know, erbium lasers for hard tissue uh, didn't get anywhere near that. So it's still hard for dentists to believe that they can get that level of anesthesia free dentistry from a laser. Uh, but slowly but surely, we're we're turning that ship, and we're actually starting to see, you know, dentists uh, come to us and say, "I've heard of it, heard of it. I believe it. I want to know more about it." Versus, I can't, you know, I can't possibly believe it. So I think I think it's coming. I think the re well, the reaction's positive, 
amongst our customers, and I think the industry is starting to come along. Come along. What does um what does your competition think about it? Do they are they do they believe it's real or are they just trying to? You know, you want to keep you want the show to be entertaining, right? So you got to. I do. I, do. Yeah. Uh, I I would think our competition hates it, <laughs> and um, you know, it's it's a different paradigm, guys. It's it's not like erbium is a bad thing. It's a different thing, and this you know CO two at nine point three microns just enables an entirely different level of performance. Um, so, uh, I'm sure, uh, they aren't happy with it, uh, but it is a huge step forward. It is a different paradigm. It's delivering the kind of performance we're talking about. Um, and so I would think the competition isn't too happy about it. Yeah. Well, I would think it, at some point it doesn't really matter what the competition well, thinks yeah, because I mean, if, if the clinician likes it and believes it and it works, they'll do anything. Right. I mean, they will, <laughs> you know, and I think if the answer had been the competition loves it, then yeah. we would have a, a, a different angle and a probably Mike would have a problem on his hands. Right. <laughs> you know, um, one thing that's and I'm trying to I'm struggling with how to ask this because I don't want to put words in your mouth. But, you know, at, at some point, you know, maybe, uh, you know, when I when I first heard about it a couple of years ago, I, you know, I had to ask myself and I wonder if you I guess the question is, do you run into this? The question of, well, does the industry need another laser? Of course the industry needs another laser. Uh, you know, and when I say that, I, whether it's a, I don't care what it is. If, the, if, the, if a tool shows up that offers a significant improvement for any industry, the industry needs it, right? Um, and, you know, that makes certain assumptions about the tool's ability to deliver value for the price that, that's charged. But if, it, if it's a valuable tool it, it, it defined by the fact that it changes the patient experience in the case of dentistry or, uh, you know, changes the, um, the economics significantly for the dentist's office, it, you know, and it, 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 the industry needs it. And, and I will tell you that the actual results from our dentists are that they report doing significantly more procedures every day as a result of having the laser because they're not injecting patients. They're not waiting for them to get numb when you can do soft. And, and by the way, that enables um, you know, four quadrant dentistry, which by the way is great for the dentist for efficiency. It's great for the patient because they can get more work done without having to come in for as many appointments. They're popping patients straight out of hygiene when they discover a cavity because we don't have to have the anesthesia step. That's better for patients and dentists for productivity, soft tissue, because you can do a ton of soft tissue work without anesthesia, without bleeding, without sutures, without post-operative discomfort. Our dentists are doing, or they're taking on all sorts of things that they would have ignored or referred out before, whether it's fibromas, phrenectomies, crown lengthenings, you name it. There's a, a very long list. Once again, it's better for the dentist economically because as they add more procedures to their repertoire, they can increase their income. It's better for the patients because they can get more work done in one place without having to go to multiple offices and the experience and and post-operatively you know it's it's vastly superior and you know we have some stats on that we can talk about later but but i think that you know those those types of improvements what industry doesn't need them? yeah right in, in that in that answer i think i counted three times that mike um that you alluded to or th that you said patient experience Yes. And, you know, and I think that because we talk to, to people all the time, um, you know, in, in our professional roles, as well as, you know, with this with, with this podcast that are, you know, developing products or have launched launching new products. And of course, they often want it to be about, you know, the, the features of those products. Right. But, you know, that whole patient experience angle is critically important. And, you know, I think that leads into, um, you know, a little bit about consumer messaging. Right. So, okay. so where, so it's convincing dentists to use the product, buy the product, use the product. That's a struggle, right? It's, it's an expensive product. It's, it's mind blowing what it does. It changes everything. It's a shift paradigm shift in how they, they treat patients. How do you get consumers to even believe that pain-free dentistry is even possible after, after 2000 years of pain 
De of pain of in dental dentistry. pain. <laughs> yeah. How do you get it? How do you get consumers to, to believe that it's true? Well, you know, that's an interesting question that I have never been asked. Okay, so this is a first. Um, but I will tell you that that is the easiest thing in the world. I, I, I can't tell you how often I'll be at a cocktail party or some, you know, a, a, a game with, with, with one of my kids and, and somebody will ask, what do you do? And I tell them, the first question is, where can I find a dentist who has it? They, the consumers just believe it. There's, they just believe it. That's all there is to it. The dentists, that's tougher, but the consumers believe it. Now, I'll give you an interesting stat. We just started polling our dentist patients, speaking of consumers. And it, it's a pretty comprehensive survey. It asks all sorts of questions. But two questions that really stand out when, when you bring them together is this. One, what percent, what, what, let's put it this way, are you considering changing dentists in the next 12 months? Very consistently, the answer is 10%. About 10% of our dentist patients are thinking of changing dentists in the next 12 months. Now, when you ask a dentist that question, they all go, I don't know, but and they want it to be zero, but they suspect it's 40%. The actual answer is 10%. Okay. And further down the survey, the question is, have you ever been treated with Solea? Here's where it gets interesting. Of the patients treated with Solea, so far, 0% are considering changing dentists. And, you know, we talked to our dentists about it, and one, one of them, Jeff Rohde, out in Santa Barbara, really nailed it. He said, we have warm towels, we have a beautiful office, we have you know, coffee, we, we train on how to greet patients and make them feel comfortably, comfortable. We have CAD cam, we do a crown in a day, everything. And the attrition rate's still 10%. And you know, he, comp comparing it to CAD cam, he said, the thing is that with CAD cam, the patient is blown away by the technology. When they can get an anesthesia-free hard or soft tissue procedure done, they're blown away by the experience. And that's the difference when you talk about patient experience. That's it right there. And we've done this in multiple dentist offices. It's unbelievably consistent, right? The other thing about it is, for right now, the dentists who have Solea are relatively alone, right? There's 200 dentists that have it. So the other reason pa patients are saying, I wouldn't even think of tra changing is because they know there's no place else they can go for now, for now. But the impact when you talk about patient experience and, and you know, kind of, you know, marketing to consumers, it's, it's really impactful, really impactful. And that's what the data is starting to show us. That's great. So let's switch gears a little bit as I want to do on you the show. You do. You're a gear shifter. I'm a gear shifter. So we, we, you, you talked about the consumer angle, um, and you also talked a little bit about the relatively, you know, for now, low number of, of, of dentists that, that have adopted the technology. So, you know, talking about marketing to dentists, mm -hmm. you know, you've got this new paradigm shifting um, device. So what are, what are you doing? What is the company doing maybe differently or, or, or non-traditionally compared to, to other dental device companies to, to get the word out to dentists about this product? You know, I don't know, in terms of getting the word out to dentists, I don't know if we're doing anything all that different. I mean, we, 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 I'm sure we do the standard stuff. We have KOLs. We have evening events. We go to trade shows. We uh, market uh, through, you know, uh, publications, you know, online. We, I think um, we pretty much market through the same channels. Um, I think our message is different. Mm -hmm. um, and and if you want, to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, please. So we try really hard to, you know, make it very clear how much we stand behind the product. And and the other thing is we. We, we want to be known as the company that, you know, absolutely what you see is what you got, get. If, if Convergent Dental says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And, and I give you some dramatic examples. But the first is, so if we tell a dentist, you should be able to do all of your cavity preps, all of them, any cavity prep you do without anesthesia, right? we mean it. It's not going to be the laser's too slow or you can't get access. You should be able to do any of them. 
you know, now some percentage of the patients are going to say, give me anesthesia anyway, but it's not like you won't be able to use it for that. And so when dentists ask us, can you use it for a crown prep? Has it been done? Yes. Do we advise it? No, it's not efficient for that yet. Crowns, when you're doing a crown prep, you're going to have to do all sorts of things that are going to require anesthesia later. Let's not oversell this thing, right? So one is we just, we go the extra mile to make sure that we're very realistic in how we present the product. We stand behind it. We tell our dentists, you've got to jump in with both feet. You've got to go to training. You've got to commit to some follow-up. And if you do all that and it doesn't work out for you, give it back. Small restocking fee, really small, a couple of thousand bucks. But we want to say to the dentist, we're putting ourselves on the hook for this thing to perform. Even if you decide it did everything that we promised you it would do, but it doesn't work with your particular workflow, back it comes, right? So that's one. And I'll give you another one. It's very interesting. So we had this just the other day. We just finished the Yankee Dental Congress. And a dentist came to the booth and she loved the laser. And, you know, her husband was there with her and they looked at it together. And, you know, uh, one of them really wanted it. And the other one was like, well, let's hold off. And the comment came back from the dentist because, you know, we offer a little special at the show. We really don't discount these things, but we offered a special at the show. And the dentist said, um, you know, I know you'll have that discount next month, same discount. I said, actually, we won't. We won't. You can ask. The answer is going to be no. Why? Because we're the company that does what it says it's going to do. And that's the one thing we really, we believe that if we really stick to our guns, even if it costs us a sale, right? At the end of the day, that credibility in the marketplace is what we're after, whether it's pricing, product performance, customer service. Here's the secret, guys, to growing a successful business. Have a great product, right? Make it, make sure it does what you promise, and then take care of the customers after the fact. That's our secret sauce right there. That's it. That's it. Let's write so, that down. Yeah. There's only three ingredients? Yeah, there's only three That's ingredients it. in the sauce. Actually, That's yeah. That's about it. Funding, yeah. it properly, funding it properly doesn't hurt, Yeah, but, but it gets a lot easier when you do what you say you're going to do. For we're, sure. We're gonna, I agree. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that recipe in, in a little bit, but, um, you know, you started talking about, um, about um, economics, and I think it's interesting you talk about having a show special, and the guy says, oh, well, you'll have it next month, and you're like, no, we won't. Um, you know, I think sometimes dentists have a hard time with, with the ROI, the return on investment story that a lot of, a lot of companies give. Right. Um, and, and obviously in this case, they have uh, sometimes have trouble believing, you know, that promotional periods actually end. Um, you know, they, but, but some of the companies will, will give an ROI that basically, you know, if you, if you follow these three steps, you know, you're going to, you know, you, you're going to make a million bucks. Right. You know, it's just going to magically happen. Um, right. You know, but, but you know, we know that practices and dentists are different. And so, you know, you have a product that has an ROI story, I'm sure. So how do you overcome, you know, this whole, um, this whole conundrum with the ROI that, you know, that one size doesn't fit all? Well, um, again, it's pretty straightforward. Um, what we put ourselves on the hook. So if the dentist buys a laser and the laser does everything it says it's going to do, but it's not working out for them economically, they can give it back. And if it didn't work, and this is what we tell everybody, if it didn't work, we wouldn't have 200 lasers in the market in two years of marketing. And that's pretty impressive for a device that's around a hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah. They would all come back right now if it didn't pay back economically. And the other thing is we, we explain it to them. It's a pretty simple equation, right? So if you're doing, you know, four extra procedures a day, which is a short hop um, be between the anesthesia free aspect of it and the, you know, blood free enabling new procedures aspect of it, you know, at, at an average of $250 procedure per procedure, that's a thousand dollars a day. If a dentist works 16 days a month, that's $16,000 a month against a typical monthly payment of about $2,000. It's pretty easy math. Even at one procedure per day, you're still at eight thousand dollars a month versus a payment of two. So, it's it's if they if they believe it, it's you know it, we will do very well. But again, like I said in the beginning, it's still hard for dentists to believe all of that. But yeah. the other thing I will tell you is we do. You heard me mention surveying dentist patients. We're big on surveys, so we survey our customers thirty, sixty, ninety days 
after they purchase the laser to make sure, you know, for, for all sorts of things, that we're doing it right. And one of the questions we ask are, is how many more procedures per day are you doing? And more than 70% of our dentists are past the three to four procedure per day mark by month two. That's, wow. that's pretty significant, right? Yeah. So, you know, and we're getting, we're getting more, we're collecting more and more data as we go. Um, and it's, it's all validating what we do. So, and, you know, as we make the product easier to use, off you go. And by the way, what's interesting, the other, the other thing you mentioned, the price that is expensive. Sometimes people will ask us, you know, you had the question about, you know, does the industry need another laser? The question we get is, well, you're, you're 10 to $20,000 more than the other lasers out there, depending on which one you're looking at. How do you rationalize that? Well, that three to four additional procedures per day is actually higher when we have a former Erbium laser user. It's very interesting, right? At four procedures per day, at $250 per procedure, that's $1,000 a day. 20 days into it, you've rationalized the difference in price. And every 20 days after that, you put another $20,000 in your pocket that you wouldn't have had. So it's a very, very strong ROI story. And, you know, we explain it factually, back it up with data from our, our docs, and, you know, that's the best we can do. Yep. And, so, you know, one of, the, um, one of the things I've noticed is that when I talk to dentists and I, and I work with companies who are trying to reach the dentist and, and they talk about it's not as, as much – with the ROI story, but it's the efficiency story, which is a big part of this, yeah. is a lot of times the clinician is resistant to the efficiency story because now it takes the care out of it and now it's all about a numbers thing. It's all about seeing more, being faster. And this is, this is a, a variation of that story. And it's, I guess what it adds in is that the, the care is better. And that's the difference is that it's kind of one piece of the story. Right. But so how do you guys overcome that? Like, how do you, you convince the dentist says, well, I don't really want to work faster. I'm, I'm fine as I am. I, I like what I'm doing. Yeah. And you know, we, we, we run into that by the way. Um, and we don't, we don't say work faster. We say, essentially we're saying you can do more in the same period of time, but that, that that's actually a multifaceted question. So on the efficiency side of it, as I said, the, the real efficiency the, 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 on the hard tissue side is the ability to work in multiple quadrants of the mouth in the same visit. Whether it's I can do cavities in multiple quadrants or I'm a crown and bridge dentist and I can treat a cavity in one quadrant even though the quadrant where I did the crown was numb, right? right. Those, you know, you just do a couple of those a day and it is, it's an efficiency gain from being able to do more in the same period of time, not necessarily work faster. Right. Right. The the but the other thing is even that as obvious as it is is a harder sell than adding new procedures to your repertoire. So that's where the soft tissue side really becomes important because the efficiency part is hard. They hear it all the time. It's hard to believe whatever reason. But when you can show, you know, a blood free phrenectomy you know, blood, fibroma removals, you know, all these, these other, you know, hemangiomas, all these things I've been talking about that come through the office every day and either don't get treated or get referred out. And you can show them getting treated literally in a minute or less in a lot of cases. You know, phrenectomies might take three minutes, right? A crown lengthening is going to take a little longer. Right. But these are all things that the dentist sees pass through their office it be, it's easier to imagine the impact on the practice. It's easier for them to envision themselves doing that, I think, than the other. But when you put them together, it's a very powerful story. Right. Yeah. Right. That's great. So that's actually, we've got so much more yeah, to talk about, but that's going to, we're going to have to break this into two. So that's going to wrap up part one of our podcast with Mike Cataldo, CEO of Convergent Dental. Be sure to join us for part two. This episode of the Dental Insiders podcast has been brought to you by Ignite DDS, fueling passion beyond the classroom for future dental practice success. Learn more at ignitedds.com.